Hi everyone, this is Connie from Connie's Creative Creations. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, please think about subscribing. It helps my channel grow and I can continue bringing content. If you hit that notification bell, you can click the down arrow and click on all and you should be notified of every channel every time I upload a video. And if you are a recurring and returning subscriber, welcome back. So I'm taking part in the five under five. I'll get to more information about that in a minute. So let's get right into the project. Okay, for my first project, I have got these three jam jars and I am covering them all three of them in Mod Podge, which will help the paint adhere to the jars as well as when I am done painting them I will put Mod Podge over the top and that will protect it from getting chipped off. So I'm just getting this these all covered in Mod Podge. Okay as you can see I'm painting this one may, uh, yellow which is Waverly's Maze and then I'm putting Folk Arts dark green I can't remember the name I'll have to put these all in the description box I'm putting that around the ring now I've got a like a lime type of green also like I said I'll put all the names in the description box of all the paints that I used this is um, uh, the green I am and it's from folk art and I'm just making like a big oval and then I'm taking uh, folk arts wheat I think it's wheat um, chalk paint and I'm coloring the rest of this jar in that in that um, color of wheat then once this one is finished I will move on to the third one now these are all chalk paints that I'm using some of them are Waverly some of them are folk art you can almost kind of tell from the top of the lid which is which because um, the lids look different and I am a plaid ambassador, so um, Waverly and Folk Art and Apple Barrel is what I'll be using it as well. They're all from plaid, plus other ones. Okay, so you saw I did that green on the bottom of this one, and now I am putting, um, this is Folk Art. Oh, it, oh, like I said, I cannot remember. I'll write it in the description box. And now I'm putting the lighter green on top of that. And then I grabbed Milk Jug and I am drawing a circle in the middle of the green. And as you can tell, I'm get, making a kiwi. This is going to be a pineapple. You can see the little things I'm putting on there. And then the pink one is going to be a watermelon. So I'm just putting those all on each one of them, or you know, all the little lines, and then I'll move to of all each the other two for all the little details. Now I am going to be kind of going back and forth, back and forth on these projects, so you'll be able to see them while I'm working on other ones. And that's yeah, that's okay. And I will be putting faces, and this is what I'm gonna put in all the little dots for the kiwi, and then I'm going to um, put the face, start putting the faces on all of these. Um, this one's a little circle and a little mustache, looks real cute. And then I will be using, I don't know if I show it, I was using a little bit of pink to give them rosy cheeks. Um, but I don't think the uh, the kiwi didn't get that. So here I am um, doing the face, and then I'm gonna put the seeds on the app on the pumpkin. I mean on the their the watermelon as well. And it's just one stroke, one stroke. I push down, pull up, push down, pull up, and that makes the uh, the seed. Um, but this is it's opposite. It's small to big so I put the tip of the paintbrush and push down the bottom of the paintbrush and that gives me the seed shape and I'm just covering this with those seeds I probably put too many but it's okay because it's my project and not all projects are going to look the same I get inspiration from everywhere um, these were inspired by um, an Instagram no, not Instagram, Pinterest. 
Okay, now for the information about this collab. It's the five under five. You do five projects. Each project has to be under five dollars each. The uh, hosts of this is Missy from the Crafty Cove and Emily from the Farm Charm Cheek Chic. And their uh, guest host is Charlotte from Crafting Up a Storm. And they've asked us to do uh, all of our five crafts to have something to do with fruit. So let's get right back into it. Oh, and that first project, I'll tell you in a few minutes when I finish it how much it cost. Now this is a 12 inch wood round from Amazon. I get them in packages of 12. They're, they were $12.99, so this is just barely over a dollar, um, maybe a dollar ten for this. And I painted um, Adirondack white, painted the whole thing, and now I'm taking that same dark green and I am putting it around the edges of this um, wood round. And then I'm going to do some more embellishments. Okay, I'm finishing up that, and then I'm going to grab that bright green, and I am going to start painting the um, inside of a lime. I'm going to make a lime. What we're making is a lime tray. This um, challenge was for, like, a tiered tray or a tray. So what I'm doing is I'm making the tray... And then all the stuff is going to be used to decorate the tray. So that's kind of where my thinking is. And this was um, quite fun. Now, as I started going, um, I realized I made my sections um, a little bit big. But, hey, it looks like a lime when it's done. And that's all I was wanting. So that works out for me. Um, yeah, so... I only ended up with five sections, and I should have ended up with, like, eight or six, at least six. But I ended up with five, and that works. It looked, like I said, it, works like a, it looks like a lime to me, even though it's not quite the exact way. But if you look at any lime, or you put four limes up together next to each other, they're not going to be exactly the same. So they're close, but not exact. So that works. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of apple barrel paint and just kind of use a fine uh, paintbrush and put the um, lines in it so that you can see it makes it look like it's the pulp um, of, the of the line. Okay, now once that is done, then we're going to um, bring back those jars and I'm, this is when I'm covering them with... Um, Mod Podge again to seal them in. Then I put those aside, bring the other back. Like I said, I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's okay. As you can see, my husband brought me my tea, like he always does every day. I love my herbal teas. So, yeah. But this is um, what I am doing right now. I'm just getting those all covered in the Mod Podge to help protect these jars. Because they are going to be picked up and handled I don't want them banging into anything or bumping into anything and the paint peel off. I'm not saying this will stop it, but it makes it a much better chance that it won't do it. So, now I am grabbing this uh, uh, tray again. And these are beads, wood beads from Panda Hall. And I will put up their uh, link in my description box. I'm just putting these on for the feet of the tray because I don't want it to be flat on any surface so that it actually looks like um, a tray. And I ended up putting seven of the beads, six around and one in the center. Then I'm going to grab my nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I'm going to make handles. And I'm just gluing them on. Because this is not a tray that you would pick up by the handles. But I want it to look like it. So I'm just tying these and uh, 
uh, using hot glue and and closing up the ends so they won't fray and then just gluing them right onto the edge of this tray and then we're going to call this tray finished now i should have probably covered it with uh mod podge but it didn't so i can always go back and do it though if i have an issue so that is that tray is finished and then now this was um it was kind of bowing so i used this paint stick i forgot i'd done this i used this paint stick and i put it on the bottom to help with the bowing process and i used hot uh, and as well as with the glue the uh, beads i used wood glue and hot glue and the same with this stick and this helps kind of give it more a little bit more stability so it's not bowing um on there and i noticed i needed more hot glue a lot of the hot glue was not touching the wood so it wasn't helping and all that was holding it was the uh i mean the hot glue wasn't touching the wood glue was all that was holding it and it wasn't going to hold very well okay now i'm back with these jars and i am going to put some flowers in them and this is all from the dollar tree and uh i'm just putting different ones in each one of them you can do a myriad of things with these but because they are taller jars and uh small mouth that's why i turned them into more of a vase than anything else and i think it's really pretty even though the flowers don't really have anything to do with fruit they really enhance the look and i really enjoyed it so i'm putting uh, the pink in one purple in one yellow in the other and i'm using this uh, baby's breath from the dollar tree and putting it in with it and i'm not worried about um floral foam or anything like that it ends up turning out and looking really really cute okay now these are this came from a, my old piano that i took apart this was a piece, a long piece. It's a, like a one and a half or two inch by two inch. And so I just cut uh, three cubes out of them. And I'm just using my sanding block from the Dollar Tree to get all the edges all smooth. And I'm using my little ladybug uh, vacuum cleaner from Amazon. And I will have links for those in my uh, uh, description box as well as the miter shears I used on to cut the uh paints or stick okay i'm painting each one of these one that really bright green one the maze from waverly and then um, one pumpkin from waverly so what we're making is a lime and orange and a lemon out of a little wooden block so that's what i'm doing i'm painting each one of these and i only needed one coat of the orange and the green and I had to go back with a second coat of the maze just because you could still see too much of the wood through it. I didn't mind if there was a little bit, I just didn't want a lot and there was still a lot. It's not as opaque. A lot of times I will do white underneath it. In fact, I do white underneath a lot of colors that is not very opaque like red, uh, yellow, even sometimes orange, but this one seemed to be good and thick enough. So I'm just getting these all painted, like I said, and then um, once they're painted, I will uh, embellish these, which is not getting very much embellishment, just enough that you can tell that they are representing fruit on this uh, tray that we are creating. And I don't know if you can tell how much you can see the, the wood grain. I think it showed up more as it dried. But it was really, really uh, showing through, so I did end up putting a second coat. Now I grabbed these two pieces of wood that I cut out on my miter saw, and I'm sanding all the edges of these, and then we are going to make two watermelon slices. Um, I know you're like, that's not the right shape. You'll see what I mean. Um, I was going to start with the white Adirondack, or no, this is Waverly's plaster, not white. And um, I was only going to put part of it. I went ahead and covered the whole thing with it. I figured it might as well. Um, we're going to be putting colors that are kind of opaque over it. And we wanted it to be um, solid 
uh, colors. So once this is done, I decided to grab a, a chopstick and I cut it in three pieces and I'm using um, Waverly's Antique Wax and covering those and these are going to be the stems for our little uh, f square fruits so I wanted to get that done while the uh, white on those blocks were done now I lost some footage where I was painting I used the same green the same the both same greens and then the red is crimson um, Waverly's crimson and so I was putting the the um, watermelon seeds and I decided I wanted more so I um, end up putting more and I go back to the little one and putting it on there and then this these are finished they don't need no kind of stem or anything that is just finished as soon as that is done and then we will move on to the next project so okay I grabbed the Waverly maize and three pine cones from my front yard of course I did put them in the oven on low for 15 minutes to make sure that there was no um, little critters in there and if there is they're dead now because they were cooked so I'm just using a paintbrush and I'm just hitting the outside edge of each of these uh, uh, pine cones and we're going for the uh, look of pineapples now I had plan to do one thing with the branches and it didn't work so now I'm doing um, these leaves and of course they don't look exactly like pine cone I mean uh, pineapples but it's okay because it's a pine cone so it works it looks just fine so I'm just going ahead and I'm gluing these little um, leaves into the top of each one of the pine cones and um, turning them into pineapples. So pine cones into pineapples. Pine, pineapples used to be po uh, uh, pine cones. I'm confusing myself. Okay, so I'm just getting this all finished. And this is our last project. So I hope you guys like all of these. So once we are done with this, we're going to go over the price of each one. This one, three dollars, three and a half dollars total for the flowers. This one, Oh, maybe two dollars. These, uh, nothing. It was just my supplies. These, nothing. It was just my supplies. The same with the little pine cones. Nothing. It was just my supplies. So it was not very expensive. So I hope you guys like all of these. I sure do. I love the way this whole setup looks. Forget to go down to the description box. Down there we'll have all of the hosts channel links as well as the play links and a lot of other information so you want to check that that out and please don't forget to call somebody and tell them you love them today that might be exactly what they need to hear as well as you guys have the most blessed week and don't forget to be the bible that somebody reads today bye